Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to the Wargame Red Dragon Tournament. In this tournament, the rules are that you have 3,000 starting points, no income, and you're playing a conquest game of 30 minutes against the other team. You're not allowed to use any coalition decks, nor US, nor USSR, and I implied those rules to make sure that we get a bit of a change up from the normal, let's say, coalition decks, NATO decks, and of course some different units that you might normally not see. The match that you're currently about to watch is the one that is in the loser's bracket, and that means that the guys in this bracket have been kicked out of the main line, but the winner of the loser's bracket goes directly to the final. We're currently looking at GSI on blue 4 versus its Rasputin on blue 4, sorry, on red 4. Now, as you might already spot, we got GSI playing with one guy fewer than normal. They're doing a 2 versus 3 which is going to make it quite a bit more difficult for them. Uh, Blue did get to pick the map, and this is Apocalypse Imminent. I'm not sure if this was an intentional choice because it is a bit harder to push, or at least I usually struggle with pushing on this map, because once you have, let's say, the bridge over here locked down, or from the other side, depending on where you're starting, of course, uh, you got the forest over here, usually ATGMs and tanks and end here, and then the fight tends to revolve around Delta. But once people land infantry, and again, ATGMs and such over here, it is difficult to get into, and that's in a normal game. If you have no income and limited starting points, you're going to have to make even rougher choices. So I'm not sure if this was indeed a tactical consideration by GSI about what tactic to use and where to defend. Because maybe with 2 versus 3, this is an, in, uh, an interesting choice. Now, Rasputin, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> sorry, Razman. Razman already covered the game on his own channel, linked it down below in the comment section for easy reference. Um, he linked it, or he um, uploaded it to his channel, so you can watch it from his perspective as well. Now, let's see, we got, by the looks of it, the French and the Israeli on blue four. And on red four. We got the Gazella, surprise, surprise. Uh, most likely... Going to scout out to here. Is that the same marker? Oh, it's Rasman's helicopter, but it's Putin's defense marker. Maybe we're going to see that Gazella fly over there and try to drop off a sneaky reconnaissance squad. Which unfortunately can only go as far as here, unless you want to cross that bridge. What else do we have? We got a Hero 2 from Rasman. Balance with the OT. No. They haven't really deployed that much. I imagine deployment phase is going to take quite a while, because the match is 30 minutes, or at least it has a timer of 30 minutes. And, um, well, the replay is 40 minutes long, so we're going to be here a while. XA-180s from Balanced. Looks like the Finnish are back in town. OT-TAP-71s and HQ-7s from Putin. So we got the Chinese over here. Resman. PvP M80As, M86, it looks like he's going to make a motorized maneuver into Delta. And he's likely to meet up there, unless I'm mistaken, with the Israeli forces <coughs> from Dude. And potentially the French forces from Toby Nambour. There is also a French counteroffensive going. And the, oh, there we go. Uh, the VAP 2013s are fast guys. There are 150 kilometer uh, vehicles on roads, of course. BTR is speeding ahead as well, and also doing 150, courtesy of being a ro uh, wheeled vehicle. And the Caesar is already opening up. I wonder if you're going to be able to hit anything with the Caesar. I mean, it's not a cluster weapon, so it's not like you just point and click and hope that you hit something, because you have a larger area of effect. Interesting air start over here. We got a Baz, a Shahak, and a Rafal CF1. Keep in mind, blue 4, 3,000 starting points, but divided over two players instead of three, so that's 1,500 points apiece. Um, but this is a fairly pricey way to start, because the Baz is 100, the Rafal is, what is it, 150? 180 even. Then we got a Shahak, that's 50. That's quite a lot of points already. And it looks like they're trying to find out whether or where there is a helicopter push. And currently they're not finding one. Uh, the Z9 is already dropping. Liren have been offloaded. And the uh, Putin bird is going to drop off command infantry. Capturing Juliet immediately. Putting them at a plus six. 
Now, at the same time, Charlie's been capped. Uh, Bravo has not yet been captured. And the same can be said for Echo. Now, is there a command infantry unit in here anywhere? Yes. We got the M325 and the 2013. So it looks like they have vehicles on the move towards Echo and Foxtrot. The Gazella from Rasman has dropped off a Senka team. These guys are going to provide information about what's going on in the town. And it looks like from the current maneuvers that the blue four units are going to make it to the town slightly before Putin's do. But maybe he wasn't even... Oh, sorry, Rasman's forces. Maybe he wasn't even angling to go there. Judging by... Yeah, he's just stopping. Now, they are at a plus four, but that is probably not sustainable. Sure, they, they're going to have this as a plus six, but blue four captures all that, and you're even again. Still, that already puts them at a plus 53 lead relative to blue four's just two points. There is an interesting skirmish over here as a pirate helicopter drops off a couple of commando para, and they're about to encounter a quite a number of Chinese recon vehicles and an MI-8 and a Z-9A. So these guys did not really stand a chance. An Alpha flies in, probably to test the anti-air, and it does get tested and finds a, an HQ-7. VAP-2013 moving into position. ATGM trying to get a lock on and gets it. And see, this is where it can get campy. Red 4 is currently at a plus 2. Blue Force Achsarit is moving towards Bravo, and that'll neutralize any income. Arguably, Blue Force is in a slightly better position, because they at least have a foothold here, which they can then potentially exploit by putting a command vehicle in there. But it will have to be either a very sneaky command unit, or a heavily reinforced one, because there is not a lot of room to hide in Delta. What is the tactic from Razman's team? What are Balanced and Putin and Razman up to? Because Blue Force seems to be just playing to hold Delta. Now, neither party can really effectively push because you don't have the income for it. You got a Tsifa E holding the water, um, making sure that nothing floats over. These things are not amphibious, the ZZC5s. Sorry, 56. Uh, HQ7s, neither. And the XA-180s, they are, but they're just machine guns. If they do make a move, they probably will not immediately get spotted by the Maglan. Because there's this forest in the way, but aside from that... Well, I don't really know what you want to do with an XA-180 over there. Aside from just lay down suppressive fire on anything that crosses the bridge. Balanced has spotted the Crotal. The Senka team is moving to position to potentially kill off the Crotal, opening up the airspace here. But then it remains to be there. There you go. Uh, it remains to be seen whether it is going to be viable. Oh, <laughs> for Red Four at all to take the skies, because Blue Four has that Rafal patrolling, and that is an elite Rafal. Now nobody's gaining any points, but Red is eleven or is at uh, one hundred and eleven versus Blue Force twenty. What we got here? Mig twenty nine nine thirteen elite. It looks like they still have a couple of guys either as a QRF or as a potential pushing force here. Anti-air, ZSDs, these are amphibious. Are we really going to see amphibious assaults here? BOV M86 moving to position. Browning is off, so it's not trying to give its position away. Let's see what they can see. Nothing. And all they can see is the gazelle. Which is probably... Yeah, it's just hovering above the water. Maglan spotting the BOV M86. If this thing gets into cover, it's going to be safe. But oh, just just before it makes it into the tree line, it gets killed off by the Maglan. Fortunately, those things are not terribly expensive, so it's not a huge loss. Attack marker, yep, right on top of the Caesar. But do they have anything to shoot back? No, they don't. Blue is just guessing where the command position is. Looking to fight this forest, but the T-72, even if it gets hit, it probably doesn't care that much. 
This could be a campy match for a while. Let's see where the breakthrough is going to happen. Right now it's just a bit of skirmishing here and there, HGMs flying left and right, but nothing too serious. New unit being brought in, HGM vehicle. BM24 coming in, oh interesting. That's the HE variant. They are massing quite a few forces here. Which, well, a few of the transports are amphibious. So it looks like we might see an amphibious assault from here to there. And I imagine that's why we see the BM-24 come in. To make sure that they can weaken this area first. Now if Red were to push here, they would encounter the Maglan and the Shaitet. Um, aside from that, there is, an, well, a bit of anti-air. And some reinforcements which are standing by to go to wherever they're needed. But aside from this one HGM unit, they got nothing. And of course the Maglans over there. Dorban LR over there. They push in through here, they might just get it. Toby is requesting shelling on this position potentially. Thinking that they might have a spotter. Maglans holding the position here. Is Bluefur gonna send in a command? Yes. Blue Force Ahsarit has just arrived in Delta. And balanced. Either has spotted the Legionnaire or is communicating with his team that this is a position that needs to go. The thing is, they don't really have the forces to engage with. Do they have long range ATGMs? No, just Legionnaires. Smoke from a Laish being put up. Interesting. What's the plan here? Are they going to try and make a push? This looks more like a defensive smokescreen to me. I did see some of the AMX 10RC moving. But to where? Where's the Beam 24? Here's the Beam 24. It's moving into position in Juliet where it was ordered to go. Shahak and a MiG-29 looking at each other. Not really to engage. Rafal also being brought in, making sure that the Shahak has some backup. Another MiG-29-913 and a Q-5D from Putin. Shahak might take a hit. Yep, Shahak's hit. And the MiG-29 is ordered to evacuate the area before the Rafal has a chance to return fire. It looks like the Maglan have been detected by the Eriks and are getting hit by the Q-5D. There we go. There's still another Maglan team in position, so it's not like this flank is suddenly open. Team still have 20 minutes left, and it's going to take Blue for quite a bit of time to catch up to that 111 score. There is more infantry moving into this forest. I think we are going to see an Amphib push over here, insofar as there are Amphib units over here. I just don't get what that smokescreen was supposed to do. So if the guys from GSI are watching this, uh, please let me know in the comments section what was that smokescreen at uh, 2106. What were you trying to smoke up? Because I just don't see it. Once again, Razman marks the well the previous location of the Caesar. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're immediately going to see another attack marker. There we go. <laughs> Appear on top of the Caesar to mark exactly where it is. But they're still not really making an effort to try and take it down. There's the air patrol again. Here we go. That was the BM-24 firing a salvo, and here comes the push. They're probing the waters, quite literally, with a couple of XA-180s. There is no HGM response. Can they see it? They cannot. Similarly, Red 4 cannot see anything but the Gazelle. With no response to the XA-180s, it's up to the other 180s and the ZSDs to move up and float across this narrow patch and try to get to the other side intact. Is Blue for unaware? No, they have seen the XA-180. So they probably know what is about to happen. MI-8 coming in. There's another XA-180 that's been spotted by Blue 4. MI-8. Are you going to get any hits? Well, probably not, because they can't quite see it. There goes the ZSD group. VLRA is coming into position to try and scare off the MI-8. 
And here we go. The first XA-180s have arrived. They're about to engage the Shia Tet. There we go. And the other XA-180 is being pulled back slightly. Now, this is a pretty risky move by Red. They're banking a lot on this attack. If this goes wrong, I don't know if they have any kind of points to come back from. The Shia Tet have once again been spotted. And now it's up to the Mi-8T to try and do some damage. But these are small missiles, rockets, 57mm. They don't do that much damage. The Shia Tet, slightly worried and having lost one operator, they don't seem to care much. So time for the 80mm rockets to come in. And uh, the Q5D engaging the Tsefa. Tsefa getting some support from the Rafale. Looks like it's kicking off now. The Tsefa has to kill these things quickly before they offload and they start shooting back with their anti-air infantry. The Shia Tet are gone. Eriks are moving into a position. The Maglans probably cannot hold this alone. Especially once they're also getting supporting for or supported the Eriks by the Mi-8. And there we go, the building is clear. We got two groups of Eriks moving in with some fire support slightly deeper into the woods with the XA-185 KTs and infantry inside. The AA infantry did not survive the encounter with the Tsefa E. They do, however, have the ZST 63s across, or sorry, ZTS. Blue 4 is spawning in reinforcements. The two Zelda groups look like they might be moving into position, at least this one is. Kernus drops. No. It didn't drop. It still has its bombs. I think that was an AT weapon from the Rovait. Balance is putting a defense marker over there. He knows that there is an HGM group over there. Kernus dropping. Was that the ZSDs? Yeah. That's a sinking tank. That's, sorry, one ZTS has died. This it does not bode well. The ZSD 63s are running out of fuel. If they cannot make it across, they're going to be stranded. Tsefa is finally knocked down by the HQ-7, probably at the edge of its operational range. Blue 4 is still at a plus 1, and they're now even. 111, 111. Come on, boys. You still have just a bit of fuel left. 550 autonomy, that should be enough. And Balanced is now spawning in additional forces, now that they have a foothold. This is where the battle starts to get really tight for blue. Because red has this foothold, and it's going to be really difficult to uproot them. They have also brought in an M84AN, making sure that they can deal with any kind of armored vehicle. Well, not any, but most. Bombing run. Pushing the Rovit out of the building, but dude saw that coming. And moved the Rovit away from the building just before the bomb hit. Perfect play, and now they're all alive. The Eriks and their supporting vehicles, however, are not going to try and go up this hill because it's too dangerous. And instead, they're going from the flank. Zanshi being offloaded, Eriks in support, 185 KTs moving in with the autocannons. Currently, this is still the only position where we actually see action. Barkan trying to fight back, but don't really stand a chance. This is going to get rough because they don't really have a counter to the 185s. Shahak flying circles around it and gets knocked down by two MiG-29 913s. The Rafale tries to fight back. Kills one MiG, I think. Yep, there it goes. Right there. The position from blue here is really shaky. Yekari 90 offloaded. XA-185 KT is out of ammo for the Bushmaster. Rovita being pulled back. Uh, <laughs> one VAP-2013 is trying to hold the line. And Putin is, in the meanwhile, flying around with the Z9A with a reconnaissance inside, so probably Liren. Rovita being pushed out. The command infantry is dead, putting Red 4 at a plus one. Now, we have units from all players here. We got units from Balanced, Putin, and Razman. And they're all working in coordination to make sure that this foothold maintains. Unfortunately, oh. That was pretty deadly. They don't really have a lot of AA aside from that one HQ-7 and their air patrol. Not this air patrol necessarily, but the MiG-29 913s. Another couple of airstrikes go in. 
Uh, J87Hs might make it out. And they wipe out another command unit. This is going to get really expensive for blue. Because that's 200 points to replace. Plus the units that you need to counter this invasion. And blue still has some units. We still have Rova Eat. There's a Tiger Hap coming to help out. But there are a lot of forces over here. And the Eriks... Well, fortunately for the Tiger, the Eriks just ran out of ammunition. They don't have any Anglos left. But otherwise, this Tiger could have been a very short-lived, expensive investment. The thing is, the damage is done to blue. Red Force at a plus three. This is going to be particularly tricky from Blue Four to come back with. They probably don't have the units. They probably don't have the points to buy the units. And while there is not a lot that's actually invading this area, it might just be enough to just keep the sectors neutral. I'm not seeing any new command units from Blue Four on the move. Rafal's still alive. The Tsefa E is coming back in to assist. The Tiger's down. The HQ-7 might know something about that. We got shelling over here. Probably the last known position, the Krotal. Taking some damage, but nothing too serious. It's still operational and still has three missiles left. M84AN might need some refueling soon. Does Red have any more units come in? Yeah, a couple of 185s. Cargo trucks are resupplying the BM-24. Which is probably going to be striking this area. XA-180. Pushing across the bridge. Getting welcomed by a spike. But the spike missed. Leaving the Maglands and just one missile. It does kill the XA-180. But that leaves the Magland defenseless against any further vehicles. And here are the further vehicles. The ZZZ-56. 15 point trucks with a 14.5mm machine gun. It is not that impressive. But it does do the job if the enemy does not have any kind of anti-vehicle capability. We got a counter-offensive over here with the Zelda and the Rovait. It looks like the Eriks and the Zanshi have taken some damage, but they might be able to hold, especially if that m 4 an is able to assist. Kurnus drops it. Oh, that's not helpful. Uh, Kurnus drops right on top of the HQ-7 and makes it out, despite being hunted down by the MiG-29. Once again, the J7Hs try to assist, but they are called out of the area before they drop their ammunition. The BTR is being very slowly butchered by a couple of 56s. Maglan's now firing back at it with a Negev. I understand their motivations, but it's not going to work out too well, as the machine guns on these things are significantly more powerful and more numerous than the ones that the Maglan team carry. Another artillery strike from the BM-24. I was wrong about the uh, intended location. It, I said it was going to be over here, but it actually landed over there, making sure there was no reinforcements going into that area. m 4 an now making its presence known, dealing with the Zelda. Rafal takes down one J7H. Working our way on a second one. Hits. Miss. The second one did not get the target. The second J7H is out. But it's going to be a while before that thing gets repaired. Blue 4 has gotten a few more reinforcements in here. Fab 2013s. And that is enough to deal with all the ZZC-56. They're all gone. But still, Red 4 is at a plus 3. Blue is trying to move a command tank, no less, into position. That's another 130 point investment. And I imagine that's going to go into Foxtrot. We got Zanshi squaring off against Rovait. We have one BTR-152 over here in case enemy vehicles or infantry try to drop down the hill. And once again, the m 4 an pops up a little bit. Fires out a couple of shots and once that overheater down, might retreat back to the hill. There we go. A help marker over here from Dude. This might be where they're intending to send the command unit. <laughs> hey, Razman. Always interesting to see people actually try to communicate with me through these text markers. Yeah, there we go. The M84N seems to be safe. There is still some Caesar fire coming back to the last known location. But overall, this thing should not get hit. 
This map is fucking garbage, says Balanced. Yeah, um, it gets campy. I'll grant you that much. And that's why I think Blue Force, or GSI, picked this thing on purpose. Because it is a bit easier to defend. Although, of course, this was one weaker spot. BM-24, once again, strikes out. Stunning the Crotal, dealing with some of the vehicles, panicking the French. And are they going to just pull back deeper into the forest? Or are they actually going to leave it? This might be in 29, yep. I was wondering if these things were all going to get clumped up and then a J7H comes in and wipes out the whole bunch. That J7H is probably still repairing after having run into the guy, um, the Rafale. Where else would you see this? I don't know. It's a map that I generally don't like playing too much because it gets so campy. And especially if you do have income, it just becomes one big artillery slugfest. You got eight mortars here, you got eight mortars there, you got BM-24s or other MLRS systems. It just gets spammy. You just keep throwing munitions across the pond and hope that something hits, but overall it's just a bit boring. Now, I don't think that Blue Four has too much that they can still throw out against Red. And Red actually doesn't need to do too much. They just need to sit back. They just need to hold on to that plus one that they have. Rafal doing some air patrol. Yep, there we go. They're at 80% of points, Red Four. I think this might have been the first amphibious push that we've seen in this tournament. I might be mistaken, but I think that I have not seen any amphibious assaults before. Wow, those legionnaires got away good, considering what got them. <laughs> Toby is going, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> We're going on the offensive. Wiping out an HGM team. Um... They're probably going to wipe out an NTR team over here. It just, just goes to show how little the guys actually had defending over here. An infantry squad usually cannot move one toe across this bridge without it getting shot off by mortars, tanks, HGMs, whatever they can launch at it. This time around, they're making it all the way into the field. And sure enough, they carry the Eryx, but it just doesn't have the range. And I think that Blue 4 knows that it's up. GSI fought a very good fight. But unfortunately, is Rasputin is going to take this one home. Which means that they're next going to be facing the team from Greyhound. That is going to be the second time that uh, it's Rasputin faces Greyhound's team. And whoever wins that one goes straight to the final. Where Freepoint is eagerly awaiting any challenger. That is going to be the real clash. Kernis squaring off against the J7H. 90% of points, 451 for red. Kernis is doing all sorts of aerobatics, but getting killed off. Yep, it was the Amphib Assault that killed him. That did Blue 4 in. Unfortunate for GSI. These guys fought a hell of a tournament. In case you don't recall, um, it was, I think, Dude with the M84ANs who did a fantastic push and who kept a game interesting till the very last minute. Have a look at that gameplay if you haven't seen it already. I'll link it down below in the description. And again, check out Razman's side from this conflict. Um, you can always learn something from Razman. You can always learn some tactic, some play, or just following his way of thinking. And he is very good at um, pronouncing how he thinks, what he thinks, and what exactly he's doing. Just have a look at his video, linked down below in the comment section. Anyway, that'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tournament match. Uh, we only have two of them left, and I'll be covering both. It's first going to be uh, Rasputin versus Greyhound. And then it is going to be whoever wins that versus Freepoint. So, join me next time for more tournament matches. And in the meanwhile, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you soon for the next one.